Hello everyone. The objective of this video is to portray our experiment in which we attempt to find out the viscosity of the lubricant using four different types of viscometers. This video includes the description of the apparatus and the procedure followed for Redwood 1, Redwood 2, Seibold and Engler viscometers. We also have the observation tables for the Redwood 1 and Redwood 2 and the calculations and the graph for our experiment on the Redwood 2. To make things easier, this video also includes the primary differences between the various viscometers. Now let's go to the lab. Ok friends, we now proceed with the first experiment based on Redwood Viscometer 2. First, let's take a look at the apparatus we have. Starting from the top, we have the thermometer so that we can test the viscosity at equal intervals of 10 degrees. Then we have the stopper for the little hole at the bottom of the vessel holding the lubricant. We need to keep stirring the water of the water bath continuously to ensure the uniform distribution of heat. At the bottom, we have the measuring cylinder to collect predetermined equal quantities of the lubricant that flows through the orifice. The source of heat here is an electric heating coil and the temperature is controlled by this regulator. Let's begin with the first part. Filling in the glycerine into the vessel, we start the heating. The first reading will be taken at 40 degrees. It is important to stir the water while heating as mentioned before. As soon as the thermometer reads 40, the stopper should be taken out and simultaneously we need to start the stopwatch to measure the time it takes to fill the cylinder with 50 ml of the lubricant. Our first observation is 43 seconds. Refilling the vessel, we repeat this procedure for 50 degrees. Our second reading comes to be 27 seconds. At 60 degrees, the, tempera the time at 60 degrees, the time taken by 50 ml lubricant is 15 seconds. Remember, it's important to keep stirring. When the temperature rises to 70 degrees, the stopwatch displays 11 seconds as the time taken. This brings us to our last reading. Heating the apparatus up to 80 degrees, the time taken by 50 ml of glycerin drops to 9 seconds. Moving on to the other viscometer, the Redwood Viscometer 1. As you'll see, the apparatus is quite similar to Redwood 2. But you'll notice that the orifice in this viscometer is smaller than Redwood Viscometer 2. This enables it to take more accurate readings of the lubricants having lesser viscosity. Moving on, you'll see the same measuring cylinder and the temperature regulator as in the Redwood 2. Beginning with the experiment, we will be using glycerine here. Keep in mind that continuous stirring is required for the uniform heat distribution, same as in the previous experiment. We start with heating the lubricant till 50 degrees. On reaching 50 degrees, we take out the stopper and measure the time for 50 ml to fill up. The first reading comes out to be around 45 seconds. The first reading comes out to be around 45 seconds. Heating the lubricant till the thermometer says 60 degree, we take another reading, 40 seconds this time. We repeat the procedure for 70 degrees and this time the glycerine takes 36 seconds to flow through the orifice. The last and final reading at 80 degrees give us a time duration of 33 seconds. Now we are going to tell you about the differences between the Redwood 1 and the Redwood 2 viscometers. The dimensions of orifice of the Redwood 2 viscometers are greater than the Redwood 1 viscometer both in length and diameter. The length of the Redwood 2 orifice is 15 mm while the length of the Redwood 1 orifice is 10 mm. The diameter is larger in the Redwood 2 viscometer at 3.88 mm and the diameter of the Redwood 1 viscometer is 1.62 mm. Now it's obvious from the larger size of the diameters of the orifice that 
The redwood 2 viscometer would be useful for oils having higher viscosity, for example, the fuel oil and the mobile oil. And the redwood 1 viscometer will be useful for oils having a lower level of viscosity between you know, 30 seconds and 2000 seconds. For example, the kerosene oil and the mustard oil. Here, we discuss another kind of viscometer, the Sable viscometer. We'll be discussing the appearance, apparatus, procedure, and other modalities of the viscometer. Except some images, you will find the Sable quite similar to the viscometers we carried out our experiments on. What you're seeing now is the apparatus. This too is similar to the Redwood viscometer. To experiment using the Sable, we'll follow the same procedure as the Redwood. Here you have the standard calculations to be carried out. We also have some images of the digital viscometer. We also have some images of the digital viscometer which increases the accuracy of the measurement. On the screen are a few more advantages of this kind of viscometer. Now we move on to the last segment of our presentation the fourth type of viscometer, the Engler viscometer. It represents viscosity as the ratio of the time taken by 100 ml of lubricant to flow through the orifice to the time taken by the same amount of water at 20 degrees Celsius. The apparatus you'll see is, again, quite similar to the previous viscometers. And I reckon that's because they all basically follow the same principle. The procedure here is the same what we've been doing, but the volume being filled up here is larger, 100 ml. When we performed this experiment in the lab, we were told that there are various different kinds of viscometers. Now the reason we decided to study four instead of just one is so that we could understand the differences between them. What distinguishes them from each other is the volume of the lubricant that has to be taken into consideration for measuring the viscosity. The Redwood viscometer measures viscosity as the time in seconds it takes 50 ml of the lubricant to flow out of the orifice at varying temperatures. The Sable viscometer does the same thing for 60 ml. But the Engler viscometer measures viscosity as the ratio of the time taken by 100 ml of the lubricant to the time taken by the same volume of water at 20 degrees. So this brings us to the end of our presentation. We carved four viscometers and study about the workings in fair depth. We'd like to thank Neha Ma'am for her guidance and the lab assistants for, um, well, their assistance. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.